Hello and welcome uh, to a new episode of the Studio Projects. Uh, we're going to do a little different today, a little bit of experimentation. And to start with, it's a little bit experimentation about sound. Um, I sometimes get very interesting ideas and suggestions about the sound of this instrument. I would sound on YouTube, which is the converted sound from a converted sound. I mean, it's far from the original sound as we record it here. But anyway, um, um, I want to share and to show you what major differences you can have with just uh, slightly changing some parameters. Um, before that, we talked about our studio and it's in a it's very interesting developments about that, but we cover that later. Uh, but first of all, you hear kind of noise at the moment. And this video is re recorded uh, after the um, Bach period and fugue recording, Bach F major, book number one, uh, this one. So, um, yeah, we recorded earlier today Schubert, Gretmann Spinrade, and there was no sound, no, no, no humming. Um, there's an electrical sound and we, we, we search for a possibility of to, to check check everything and it's, it's still there and I don't know what to do about it but that's one element that's interesting for this uh, show I mean this episode that's one of the reasons that we that a professional studio is actually um, necessary and it's not necessary but you wouldn't have as easy as we have here in our living room this kind of noise um, because the electrical circuits are different in the studio than in a house that's very complicated so I'm sorry for the uh, inconvenience and this noise I try to solve it for the next video of course by the way we just recorded the F major with it because of course signal noise ratio you won't hear it when i'm playing you'll hear it when i stop okay that's live um we recorded here and as, as you see we have two neumann mic microphones that's the neumann tlm 170r our main microphones and we have here i've added two a key akg a how do you say that in english akg and anyway C3000, um, which are my first microphones. I used them in the beginning of the channel and long before when I played the organ, they were, were often with me. But we're going to change the um, cabling just to give you an impression of only changing microphones. Of course, the Neumanns are rather expensive microphones and they sound different and maybe even better than the AKGs. Um, but anyway, I'm microphone as a tool as a kind of color adds to that and um, the neumanns have direction direction characteristics and they are not on the near characteristic characteristics but and that means that only the sound coming from uh, before from uh, in the front of the microphone and a little bit on the sides is recorded we can change that so we're going to I'm going to demonstrate you just the sound as it is on the recording with the two Neumanns. Of course, they were not with the AKGs, but the two Neumanns uh, with a near characteristic is sounding like this. And I will put up my headphones so I can describe the sound that you hear. So it's a rather direct sound. The distance from the instrument now is uh, about one meter. I have made many recordings lately, very close miking, very close to the strings, which is a technique that's used often in jazz music, uh, just to approach the instrument and have all details, but you color the instrument as well. I mean, you have an enhancement of the, of the lower frequencies and also I think on the higher frequencies, um, which is actually nice. So we have this sound and you have just listen to the bass. I give you another example here. So it's very clear, very well lined. 
um, it's the distance gives a kind of neutrality. What I will do now, and don't, it just, I just make a little bit of noise. I will put the Neumanns, change the Three hundred sixty degrees is uh, captured, and here we are not in the studio. This is our living room, and I will just show you the roof structure. This is wood, just go up with the camera. So it's coming up like that. So it's a rather high ceiling, it's about four to six meters, like that. Okay, put it, and. Um, what you will hear now, I just play first and explain later. Um, okay, same passage. <laughs> Microphones are capturing now is the direct sound of the instrument, but both the reflections and the low uh, frequency, so the bass part, is changing the most. And I hope you hear it on YouTube as well, um, because that sound, as I said before, is converted. But what the low frequencies have a, a much longer wavelength, so they are much stronger, so to say, than according to the upper um, frequencies. So they travel to the roof and they come back. Our roof is like this, sloped and then like that. So it's ideal before because the reflections are not direct. I mean, it's not one to one. But anyway, the microphones are capturing all the reflections. That gives a sound that's less direct, a bit more confusing as if the room is much bigger. Um, but the bass is enhanced. I mean, the bass is much stronger. And that's just in a, to show you just by changing the the direction characteristics of the microphone gives a complete different sound. Um, so what's a neutral sound? I just give another example. You have here figure eight. Uh, here and this microphone just capturing here and here, not from the side. It gives rather nice structure as well as combination. You have the room. You have the um, direct sound, but not the, the boominess. So the bass is much thinner than before, and even if, if, I, if I go a little bit higher, we could try to do that, the effect is even more. So that's, that's, that gives just the idea what sound do you want. That's the instrument. If I would put the instrument closer to a corner, the instrument itself would get more bass frequencies. In a studio with its controlled environment, and we will talk in one of the future episodes about the recording room, the neutrality of that and the variability of that room is, if you uh, it's, uh, it's controlled, that means that there is no unwanted reflection. If I would put the, the Neumann there in, uh, in um, omnidirectional uh, stand, then it would have less effect on here, it would be much nicer actually. Um, the unwanted reflections are, are gone. So I just, just uh, compare now the Neumanns with the AKGs. Um, just last time, last, uh, just to give you an example again for the Neumann. For the beginning. Okay, remember that sound. I just put my pre amplifier, pre, pre amplifier in line, so you won't hear me for a moment. Okay, so I just changed the pre amplifier from microphone to line just to protect a little bit here. And we hear what we have. So 
this is a totally different sound. I mean, same instruments, same equipment, changed nothing. I could you could say that the AKGs they could uh, the the sound the, the level should, could be and uh, decrease a little bit just to match the Neumanns, but it's much more a metallic sound. The Neumanns are a little bit more distant, more neutral. Yeah, what's neutral? Um, the division between bass and, and, and treble is much different. It's on the AKG is a little bit like it's going in between. It's also a new characteristic. And um, it's just less clear. And although the characteristics of the, of the microphones is new characteristics are the same as we used on the Neumann, still you have the feeling that there is much more room to that. <laughs> Less divide. It's a very good microphone. That's that's. But in this case, in one gives a different uh, uh, kind of sound. I just go to line again. I change back to the Neumanns. Put the amplifier back to line. And what we're doing now is just uh, bringing the microphones closer to the instrument. See if that works like this because they're very heavy. Okay. It might uh, sound, of course, will sound, of course, much uh, louder. I hope that I. Okay. And just see what it does. I can put it on only again. Right. Just take the headphone from my head. Oh, it's figure eight still. Going to near characteristics. So the comparison with the with the but to the near the sound still is very very in line. This is a near characteristic. <laughs> So that's very, very clear. I mean, a bit dry, and it may be, yeah, maybe less interesting than than the other one. We changed to only, and, very, and by the way. Uh, it's just about sound. This is omnidirectional. So what's the sound of the clavichord? And it's in this room. Put it in another room. The sound will change. And it's, that's my 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 opinion that the recording is never neutral. You always add something. And the recording tools are just tools are instruments. It's 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 one element in between the, the instrument and the listener when you have a recording that you should take in. That you should not fight for. You have to accept that it's coloring, but you have to find a color that's nice. And you will never, never, never end up in the recording that you will hear at your place that sounds exactly as I hear it. Even our ears are different. I mean, uh, it, the recording should sound nice. It is a different medium than a live, uh, live uh, perception. But anyway, approaching the instrument that close means that the distance from the instrument to the roof and back is the same, but the distance from the instrument to the roof back to the back of the of the microphones is more, and the distance from the instrument to the front of the microphone is less. So the microphones are capturing much more sound, and really it's much more sound 
because just as half a meter uh, is for ears is nothing, but for the microphones in decibels is enormous. Um, so the, the proportional division between the direct sound and the indirect sound in this position is much more in favor of the direct sound, so it's better. So close recording might be interesting just to use omnidirectional sound, omnidirectional characteristics. Why are we not, did we not do it in the past? It's just because we don't have a studio yet. We have here we have a very nice house, very nice recording possibilities. But we are cars driving uh, by and if you put it on the omnidirectional position, you tend to hear more from the, from the traffic. It's not dramatic, but of course, it's stupid if a, if a, if a, if a recording is ruined just by a car passing by. And just in the near characteristics, approaching the instrument, gives more possibilities to avoid that. So that was it. I mean, this is just a, a small vlog about, of a long vlog, anyway, a demonstration vlog about the possibilities of microphone positions. And we didn't actually experiment with positioning, just lowered it a little bit, but uh, changing the Neumann, I'm sorry for the noise, just a little bit higher or a little bit towards the instrument. It's, it really changes the, the, the sound. And at the end, you have to choose which one sound you like the most, and it's the variations are inf in infinitive. Um, so, what sound do you like? Um, close sound, direct sound, a little bit neutral sound, omnidirectional sound with a little bit of confusion, maybe indirect reflections, only direct reflections. Again, in the studio. You don't have indirect reflections, which makes life much more easier. You have controlled indirect reflections. Okay, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please ask questions if I can answer them. I'm not a specialist, I'm just a musician that dives into the world of recording because I find it interesting and I think it's one it's a necessity to understand. And if, of course, if you have plan, we have plans to do it ourselves, we have to study about this issue and that, uh, but I, that doesn't make me a specialist i'm just an interesting interested in the in the, in the in the in the theory and in the experiments so i hope you enjoyed it ask questions if you would do suggestions and if you like the show please subscribe and share it with your friends we see each other very soon again bye